ever since I was a kid, I was obsessed with the BAE Hawk and the Red Arrows. But when I was a kid, there was no EDF RC models. But that's different these days. This is the FMS BAE Hawk. It's a plug and fly model, so all you have to do is add your own receiver and your own 6S battery from a 4,000 milliamp hour to 5,000 milliamp hour. The batteries are expensive, about 72 quid. It comes nicely packed and the detail is incredible, but it should be for the price. It's around about 300 pounds. The wings are taped in with this protector. There's no gluing with this model. It is just six screws and that's your lot. You do obviously have to plug the servos into your receiver, but there's just four bolts on the wing and then two bolts on the tailplane. So it's gonna be easy to take down and store. The wings, are in one piece, but they're not actually that large. And we've got retracts here with door covers, uh, which is a little bit more scale detail than you get with the free wing Hawk, but I guess that's why that one's a little bit cheaper. Servos here already installed and flaps, ailerons. On the top, we have got a wiring box and that's so that it can simplify the gear i think and also the separate servos into a single channel and then that feeds up into the model now these leads are not very long so i think if i'm going to be taking the wing off then i'm going to be adding servo extensions to them it's a shame that they didn't cover the wires underneath here, but it's a small thing. I guess you could paint them yourself if you really wanted to. We've got some nice detail there for like vortex generators. And then it does have some LEDs in the wing. I don't think they're that bright. I think they could be brighter. There's LEDs on the fuselage as well. So let's take a look at that. So here is the fuselage. Got a couple of scale details here and also these active air intakes. Air intakes here as well. Canopy just pops off. Got a flashing LED here and just like the red arrows, LED at the front and also a hole to screw in a pitot tube, but again, LED, not very bright. Now, this whole thing is white foam and painted red. And that's a bit of a problem with these things because, you know, I can see that they have taped up the connectors here for the horizontal stabilizer. But when that tape comes off, it's just going to rip the paint off. I'll try and be careful and hopefully it doesn't do that because those are going to have to get pushed inside there when the tail sits flat. But you can see that we have just got two holes here for the tail plane that just slots in. I think it's, yeah, just one servo on this side. So inside we have got a battery bay and it's actually inscribed there, FMS. We have got an EC5 connector. I'm not a fan of this connector, but I think I'm going to keep it because EDF draw a lot of current. This, I think, has got a 100 amp ESC. It's basically, you know, just a fan. You can see it down there, so many blades. And yeah, so the flight time, probably four minutes if we're lucky with a 5,000 milliamp hour 
battery. I have actually already had one of these and had a really bad crash. So I thought that this thing was going to fly for at least five minutes. So I flew the first one and after about two minutes, 50, something like that, I lost all power. And these things are just a brick when the power is lost. And unfortunately, I couldn't make it back to the field. Oh, losing power. Oh, shit. Just oh, tickle shit. it round. Uh, power gone. Just gently come to the patch as you are. Dead stick, dead stick. Go for the butcher. It wasn't a particularly heavy landing. However, this whole front of the nose just came off. And that is because these things are built in sections and then glued together. And here, you can't see it because this one is in one piece, but there was a glue line here and this bit just snapped off and the whole nose broke forward and also this nose came out here but yeah gonna have to be very careful make sure i'm monitoring my battery i'm going to have like a, a voltage warning in there just uh, to give me the best chance now this one actually comes with a flight controller it's called the reflex flight controller uh, it's got three modes. I think optimum is what it comes in. And that basically just, you know, small stabilization just to smooth it out in the air. And it will let you do loops, rolls, the whole thing. But then there is like a beginner one that's like angle mode, uh, restricts uh, your angle of flight so that you can't do rolls or anything like that. Um, it's got an option. I think, to change the mode on it. So the servos for the controls run through this thing and then they go into your receiver. But of course, the landing gear doesn't need to go through that. So uh, your gear will be going separate. You can see at the front as well, we have got these doors that close. Again, in a crash, that door is very close to the front and when that got pushed back the door snapped off they do make spare parts for this thing but like everything in the hobby at the moment very difficult to find anything in stock this is the horizontal stabilizer uh, we got two servos for this one that connects into the back of there again that's just where your two screws go we've got an anhedral on this just like the original hawk but unlike the original hawk we've got a separate elevator because on the real hawk the entire surface moves like that as an elevator but i guess some compromises have to be made so not everything is completely scale this is the 50 display seasons version which they're not actually in that color scheme anymore little cheat hole there i think for airflow for the edf Another light underneath there and some scale detail, which I can see getting ripped off, especially when landing in long grass. We've got another outlet there just to let the air flow out of there. And then that's where the wings sit. You can actually see the ESC there and this hatch here, I guess, to get to the EDF. So this has all got to come off. Let's see if I can do it without removing the paint. Nope, it's come off there. I don't know why they've done that really, because that kind of needs gluing down anyways. Uh, compared to the QT model that we reviewed on the channel, this one isn't as good. I mean, it looks the part, but look at that. I mean, it's not going to get seen, but what's the point in putting masking tape on there? They could have just stuck some double-sided tape or even hot glue on there. Okay, I guess you might want to get it all that mess of server-wise, but really what we're interested in 
are these ones feeding through the wing as you can see uh, very short so be good to uh, elongate them just so that you know you can take the thing apart easier because these have got to feed through a tiny hole that hole there the cut love other scale details here like a little fin that goes underneath there i'm not going to install that it's just going to come off uh, we have got these here which just again clip into the underneath but I'm not sure they're actually going to be that useful and if you have a crash they're going to get ripped off same with this the red arrows they have a smoke pod underneath but of course this is just for show and it hangs pretty low again it just clips on so i can leave that off or put it on it if i want but you have to have really short grass for edfs anyway so to give it a fighting chance i'm not going to put any of this stuff on we've got the six screws in there that's all that it's going to take and also the pito tube right so now i've got to take all of these servo wires poke them through that little hole so they reach the wires on the other side and put the wing on okay that's the wing on you need a two millimeter hex driver for the screws so the elevator and the rudder are already connected to the flight controller. I've got to pull the ailerons through, and those are gonna go into this first channel there. Uh, looks like they're using the LEDs on the mode channel. And uh, the gears and the flaps, those are going to connect together. So there's the front gear connects to these two gears and then you have a single gear wire that goes into your receiver i'm going to be using a six channel crossfire receiver let's get the elevator or tailplane on next again see the paint just peel away as i pull that off uh, it does look like there are some sort of canals for the server wires to go down and those are going to have to get pushed into there and then clipped in. Okay, that's in there. You have to really push the servo wires into here. And also, this material here is very easy to scratch. So what I did was when I was tying it up, this one moved the rudder that way and vice versa. Otherwise, when you come around with your thumb, you catch the paint very delicate paint on this unfortunately the sense of the pack so to speak and it just goes straight to that because the wind's flying off now Oh, that's better. Yeah, loads more power than last time. Something must have been wrong last time, Phil. Hands shaking like a leaf, man. No, needs aileron. I can't stop shaking. <laughs> you get the trim? Yeah, a little bit. Needs a little bit of up in. Big turns and that would be fine. Right, relax, come on. Why am I this shaky? Holy God. EDFs are scary. I've never been this shaky flying a plane. Come on, relax. Flaps it off, aren't they? Yeah. Keep your power on for flight stabilization. Smoke on, Andy. Oh, you need the power on, don't you? Yeah, don't. 
uh, fly around with no power. That's me just shaking yeah, on the stick. The stabilization thing. No, it's not that. It almost wants to stall out there. This feels more like yours now, Phil. So there must have been something wrong with that one. Maybe a bad ESC or motor. It's drinking power. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? When it comes to doing a landing, yeah, on this turn, you bleed all the speed off with just enough for stability. God, I'm shaking like mad. What's wrong with me? Too fast. I think it needs flaps. Try flaps. No, you just need to go wider and bleed the speed off slower. Bigger turn and just more gradual line up. So steady throttling off to about third there, then quarter, let it drop in. Let it drop in. Lead it off with elevated, careful, nice, nice, nice. nice. Cool. That's how you do it. Three minutes. <laughs> oh my god. I was like, my hands was like this. Yeah, I'm shaking already. Relax, man. If you've done it once, you can do it. Still shaking. <laughs> oh, we got the baby one. I need to get that one. <laughs> Look, it looks less stressful. Taking off. Low pass. Our front wheels down. Ah, let's have a look what it's done now. She's just right there at that speed. It doesn't want to fly anymore. And shaking again. There's me beeper. That's at two more minutes. Not too tight. Quarter power with that. Landing! Landing. Looking good, just bleed it off. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Someone mind just uh, just picking the, you have to pick it up because I just want to stick the undercar up, but it might catch your hands there. That's it, that's it. Thanking you, ta. So on a 5,000 milliamp hour 6S battery, I landed the model 
after three minutes and when I checked the voltage it was still four volts per cell so the second takeoff you saw was actually on the same battery which had a beeper connected to the balance port set off to go at around about 3.6 volts per cell which gave another two minute flight time so I think at a push with a proper battery monitoring system a six to seven minute flight time is possible however as we all know 6s voltage drops off like a cliff so for now I'm not going to be pushing the flight time because this thing is like a brick as soon as you don't have any power the plan with the EDF was to add head tracking FPV to it but if that's to be successful I need a lot more time on the sticks to know what I can get away with because the smallest error and the wheels literally break off or if the tail strikes the ground then it will get ripped off due to the speed of the thing when it's landing oh and the battery straps inside weren't quite long enough for a 5000 milliamp hour 6s lipo so that's something that I need to sort but one thing's for sure, there's going to be a lot more fixed wing content on the channel because it's what makes me excited to get up in the morning. Anyways, that's enough of that. If you want to support this channel and buy from any of the shops listed in the video description and the pinned comment, then clicking on those links will help me out a lot to keep the channel going. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.